Okay. Um, today's stream is just going to be a short stream. Um, just reading the part um, that I left off at. Um, I actually didn't check. I actually don't know exactly which part I left off at. I have to go and check. Let's see. To the extent that it imposed a strict neutrality on the monarch, which Sir Robert could hardly view with an equanimity, a court that was peopled exclusively by his political enemies. Hmm. The composition of the house called, therefore, came to seem an important political question. Melbourne was anxious to soften the blow of his having to leave her, realizing that if at the same time Victoria were to be faced with the loss of the, the familiar persons who had surrounded her since her accession, she would be put under an additional strain when she was already finding her situation almost more than she could bear. He therefore made what proved to be a most dangerous suggestion. Uh, I see. This was that in her Hold negotiations on. with Peel, she had better express the hope that none of her household, being a constitutional king or queen, uh, when I can, and Let's she... See would even replace the gentlemen of her household who were active politicians and members of parliament but she was not prepared to give up her ladies i should have done this before the stream started but her, i argued. guess um this is where i'm at personal not political oh okay that's really where i left off okay that that seems like we're because I wasn't sure if it was after the that paragraph on the 55th page, it was after the first paragraph on the 55th page, or a little bit into the second paragraph, I wasn't sure. So I guess I'll, I'll just go ahead and start. And this is, uh, this is a little section uh, on, until it ends on courtship and marriage. It was upon this rock that the negotiations with Peel broke down. Though it took the form of a constitutional crisis, the tussle was in reality a clash of personalities. Melbourne had described Peel as a stiff, cold man. He was certainly not the type to establish easy relations with an impulsive, emotional, and harassed young woman. Mm. Uh, that's certainly one way to describe uh, Victoria. <laughs> I guess that's how... Uh, that's... That's how maybe Peel would view Victoria view through a cold and stiff lens. If if you were to summarize what Victoria was in a cold manner, that's how you would do it. Impulsive, emotional, and harassed. I guess I guess that's one way to see it. Hold on while I. Um, Did I not change? Uh, uh, hold on. Oh, I see what's wrong. I'm trying to uh, copy paste the the link. 
There we go. No. Uh. No. There it is. Okay, um, moving on with the book. In his political career, he rarely allowed either his own personal interests or his likes and dislikes to sway his actions when he thought the interests of the country were involved and he did not find it easy to accept the fact that other people were not capable of the same degree of detachment. Peel was respected by many, but the number who liked and appreciated him were few. In later years, one of these was to be Prince Albert. And surprisingly, the queen herself came to like him. Moreover, Peel was suffering from the further disadvantage of filling a high political position traditionally reserved for the well-born. True, his father also Sir Robert Peel had been created a baronet, but the Peel fortune had been made in cotton. It is true also that Lord Melbourne professed ignorance of his own grandfather, which Victoria thought very fine in him, but about Peel there was still hung, hung the aura of not being a quite uh, not being quite a gentleman. Victoria likened him to a dancing master. Dancing master. While dear Lord Melbourne was a peer. Sir Robert therefore faced the obstinate young woman at a considerable disadvantage. At first, the negotiations opened by the Duke of Wellington seemed to. Uh, at first, the negotiations opened by the Duke of Wellington seemed to be going uneventfully. Although the Queen wrote to Melbourne that she had the impression that Peel was never happy nor sanguine. Though Victoria prided herself on having shown no agitation, she can hardly have displayed the warmth necessary to put a man like Peel at ease. Aware as he was of the Queen's preference for Melbourne, Okay. In subsequent interviews, all went smoothly until Sir Robert raised the question for her ladies. Indignantly, the Queen replied that she refused to give up any of them. Did she mean them all? The mistress of the robes and the ladies of the bedchamber 
all was the uncompromising reply. The result was a genuine impasse. Victoria was determined not to lose her ladies and considered it outrageous that she should be asked to do so. Sir Robert argued that he must have some proof of her confidence in her new ministers and that and that many of the ladies in question were the wives of his political opponents. Victoria countered this argument by declaring that she never talked politics with her ladies, which was probably technically true. One root of the difficulty was that neither the Queen nor Peel could quote a firm precedent. Victoria was the first Queen regnant since Anne when the constitutional position of the monarchy had been very difficult, uh, different, different. Uh, since then, the Queen's household had been merely that of a consort. After the interview, Victoria informed Melbourne that she had seen so frightened a man. Clearly, she thought that she was getting the best of the battle. For she wanted Melbourne to be prepared for what might happen in the next few hours. Meanwhile, the Duke of Wellington did his best to administer a lecture on the constitutional issues to the indignant queen. I want to look that up. I want to look up what exactly indignant means. Feeling or showing anger or annoyance as what is perceived as unfair treatment. Meanwhile, the Duke of Wellington did his best to administer a lecture on the constitutional issues to the indignant Queen, pointing out that it was quite irrelevant whether she talked politics to her ladies or not, for the, mat for the issue was a matter of principle. In spite of anything that either the Duke or Peel could say, Victoria was convinced that she was only defending her rights and that it would be absurd if Peel broke off negotiations because she refused to give up her ladies. This determined young woman had got both Lord Melbourne and Sir Robert Peel where she wanted them. 
she informed Peel that she could not agree to a course of action that was both contrary to usage and repugnant to her feelings, and then communicated to Melbourne what she had said. Peel refused to accept office on these terms and shook Melbourne somewhat when, in his letter declining to do so, the Prince Minister designate made it clear that he had asked the question, asked the Queen to only some changes in her ladies, whereas the Queen had consistently implied that she was being faced with a demand that she could replace them, that she should replace them all. When Melbourne raised this discrepancy, Victoria argued with the kind of logic which is sometimes described as feminine that there was no difference between some and all. Never, never heard that one. I, I guess um I guess that's the first for me. Um never heard that one. It just feminine logic. Even so Lord Melbourne felt that he must put the entire situation to his cabinet before he was able to continue. Sentiment and the spectacle of a forlorn young queen fighting for her ladies won the, her the cabinet support. And Sir Robert and the Tories retired defeated. Victoria kept her father figure for another two years. She had fought her campaign with tenacity and skill. Had she genuinely believed that Peel had intended to make a clean sweep of her household? She certainly told Melbourne that Peel was such a cold, odd man that she was never sure that she understood his meaning. So there may have been some failure in communication. Or had she in fact persuaded herself that there was no essential difference between some and all. Whatever the case, it was no mean achievement. An indicative of her toughness loyalty and sheer cleverness when fighting for a cause in which she believed. The end of Lady the end of the Lady Flora affair was less happy. Ugly rumors continued to circulate. At a Scot, where Victoria accompanied by Melbourne, rode up the course, two Tory ladies hissed at her from the grandstand. On another occasion, there were shouts of Mrs. Melbourne from the crowd. By the end of June, it was clear that whatever the cause, Lady Flora was dying. On twenty seventh June on the twenty seventh of June, the Queen, in a belated gesture of sympathy, nerved herself to visit the doomed woman who died on the fifth of July. Before she died, she had insisted that a post mortem should be performed to clear her name. 
and this revealed the fact that she had died of a tumor on the liver. This had been unknown. This had been the unknown cause of the suspicious swelling. Her body was taken by ship to her family home in Scotland, where the funeral was turned into almost a mute anti-Victoria protest. In London, when the Queen sent a carriage to join the cortege, which accompanied the body on the first stage of his journey to the wharf. The carriage had a few stones hurled at it. Gone was the popularity of the gay young queen, who now looked set, who now looked set to become as unloved a figure as her two uncles had been before her. And that's the end of the section. Um, the next section is uh, courtship and marriage. gonna try to zoom in on this no I can't really make them oh I can I, I can read that oh right, let me see what the here uh, satire of the question of Victoria's Queen's marriage the why the rival watermen are Prince Albert of Sackleberg Prince George, the Queen's first cousin on the left, who urged, who is urged on by his father, Adolphus, Duke of Cambridge. George was the favored English candidate for her hand. Behind the Queen stands Melbourne, advising her to take Albert. Um, well, uh, that's the, that's the end of the section. I will continue reading this on a uh, Wednesday. But, uh, that's it for now. Um, thanks for listening and watching. Um, that's the end of the stream. Uh, 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 goodbye. Bye.